Welcome to the SCP Foundation. I am 05-4, and today you are being briefed on SCP-038. Let's begin. Item number, SCP-038, Object Class, Safe, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-038 is to be watered twice per day via overhead mister. Should the mister break for any reason, attendants should water SCP-038 by hand until it has been fixed. Lighting is provided by a computer-controlled lighting array. Attendants watering SCP-038 by hand and maintenance personnel fixing mister or lighting should wear hazmat suits to prevent accidental cloning. It is terribly awkward when that happens. <laughs> Moving on. Description. SCP-038 was found on an abandoned farm in Redacted, New York in 19 Redacted. It was at first thought to be a common apple tree. However, upon closer inspection, it became apparent that SCP-038 was growing things other than apples and, in fact, other than fruit. SCP-038 has the ability to clone any object that touches its bark. Objects begin growing almost instantaneously and reach maturity within a matter of minutes. A weight limit of 90.9 kilograms, or 200 pounds, per object has been previously recorded. Objects that SCP-038 has thus far cloned include apples, oranges, watermelons, eggplants, candy bars, snack foods, see addendum number one, televisions, toasters, laptops, keys, see addendum number two, chairs, wine, DVDs, CDs, see addendum number three, cats, dogs, and people. Human and animal cloning through SCP-038 is not recommended as they appear to age quickly. The majority of these clones live, on average, two weeks. After thorough examination of the deceased clones, it has been determined that they had begun to ferment before death. Object is currently held on Site-23 and there are currently no plans to move it. Addendum number one. Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of items from the vending machines. See document number 338-TAC-1. Those vending machines help fund the site. Stop stealing. Addendum number two. Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of personnel items. See document number 338-TAC-1. Addendum number three. Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of movies and music. See document number 338-TAC-1. Piracy is a crime. Addendum number four, Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of cans of Miller, Budweiser, and Foster's. Dr. Klein has furthermore expressed customary disapproval of the quality of such cloned items. See document number 338-TAC-1, Bravo. Document number 338-TAC-1, I would like to remind all personnel that SCP-038 is not, I repeat, not a toy. It should not be used for cloning car keys, movies, music, or items from the vending machines. If this behavior continues, I will be forced to limit access to SCP-038. Dr. Klein. Document number 338-TAC-2. It has been noted that SCP-038 is able to clone SCP-500. However, such pills only work 30% of the time, with chance of successful healing dropping as time since cloned increases. In 60% of the cases where the infection is permanent, symptoms of infection remain, though further infection is neutralized. SCP-038 Partial Testing Log, Select Experiments Only. For full test records and reports, contact affiliated researchers for authorization. Date, November 8th, redacted. Intent, confirmation of mass limit, investigation into consequences of exceeding limit. Summary of test results. 400 pound steel ingot made contact with the outer bark of SCP-038. Chamber vacated as a precaution. Clone ingot grew at typical speed, but growth halted abruptly short of completion. Examination of the end of the aborted facsimile revealed a rough texture superficially resembling miniature scale tree bark. Item detached from SCP-038 as typical and was subsequently found to weigh 90.91 kilograms, or almost precisely 200 pounds. Date, November 8th, redacted. Intent, investigation into duplication of non-biological animate matter. Summary of test results. SCP-173, 
deemed a suitable test subject because of its lack of verifiable life processes introduced into containment chamber by Class D personnel. Contact made with the outer bark of SCP-038 and SCP-173 returned immediately to containment. SCP-173 facsimile began development at typical speed, beginning at point of contact. As consistent with previous tests, growth halted at the 200-pound threshold, in this case terminating development after replication of the head, right arm, and partial upper torso. Class D test subject was ordered to break eye contact with clone. When test subject eventually blinked, no movement was observed in clone material. Extinguishing and re-establishment of containment chamber light supply revealed no apparent reaction from cloned material. Experiment concluded. During storage of cloned portion of SCP-173, it was observed that the partial facsimile was in fact making violent gestures at a dramatically slower rate. Movement was shown to continue regardless of state of observation. And that concludes your briefing on SCP-038. As you can guess, that last experiment is why you are being brought onto the project. If they had been successful in cloning SCP-173, that would mean that we would have to contain another SCP-173, an SCP that has already breached containment multiple times and killed many, many personnel. This type of lapse in judgment is not to be repeated. Otherwise, this video will be watched by your replacement. Remember, we secure, contain, and protect. We die in the dark so that they may live in the light. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more. If you didn't enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a comment as to why. Uh, please try to keep your comments uh, constructive if you can. And, well, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your whatever.